Hello and welcome to another episode of the Amazon Unfiltered podcast. Today we're joined by Seth Hurd from Brand Expand. Seth, I'm super excited to have you on today. Yeah, thanks, Saif. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Perfect. So I actually spent a couple hours just researching. Um, I went through a couple of videos and a couple of other podcasts that you've been on, and you have a super interesting story. So I don't you uh, kind of share with our listeners like how you got into it, what the journey's been like, and maybe when you started. Yeah. So. Um... Man, so I went to school for accounting and finance, um, worked in the corporate world for six years. And I think like a lot of other entrepreneurs just wasn't satisfied, you know, just work a ton and you're not really getting that return um, for your time. And so in 2015, uh, just started throwing around a couple ideas for um, products to sell. Um, basically, you know, tried a couple products, they didn't work out, ended up in the health and wellness space and selling on Amazon. Um, and then over the course of five years, I was able to bootstrap that to a seven figure exit in 2021. Um, and then while I was growing that, I was networking a lot with, um, what's called million dollar seller network, MDS and doing a lot of consulting. Um, the original company was actually called econ consulting. And I noticed a lot of sellers were just having this issue with not being able to drive external traffic to their product listings. You know, they were using, uh, stitching together many chat flows, you know, trying to build email lists. Like it was just really chaotic. Right. And, and I knew this too, cause I was a seller and, and there was no really good way to get off Amazon traffic. Um, and on other channels as well, I was on Walmart, um, I'm selling on Etsy now. So just any channel, just getting that traffic is, is pretty challenging. And so, uh, naturally we, we just kind of uh, wanted to solve that problem. And so we started brand expand and like many businesses, it started with a network of G sheets, um, just, you know, trying to do everything we can manually. Um, and we were continually capping out our bandwidth. Uh, we could do like 40 to 50 concurrent launches. So the next step was, okay, let's build a software. Um, so as you know, software is extremely challenging, especially for a non-tech founder. Um, so what we thought would take six months ended up taking two years, considerable upfront investment before we saw any return. Um, and then we launched in December of 21 brand expand and we're, we've been scaling it ever since, um, and building out the technology. So, uh, that's kind of the story. Yeah. Right. That's, that's super interesting. So obviously you launched some time ago, it's like 2023 now. So it's almost mm -hmm. eight years ago that you've launched almost nine, even considering that we're in November. So mm -hmm. things have changed. And, uh, yeah. since today's like topic of the episode. It's like Amazon product launches or even omni-channel launches and driving off Amazon or off whatever channel you're using traffic to kind right. of boost those launches. I thought I'd start with my first question as um, like, what's the difference between launches like then and now? Like how have launch strategies changed? What are launch strategies even for like the beginner setter? And how have things like kind of evolved today? Yeah, great question. So, man, you know, back in like 2015, you could it was really the wild west on Amazon. I mean, you could buy reviews back then, you know what I mean? So it was, it was really crazy. Um, and so sellers would get super creative, um, with different launch types, um, buy reviews. Um, you could, you know, spend a thousand dollars on a super competitive product and rank pretty quickly. You know what I mean? You didn't have to buy at least $10,000 worth of inventory, which is pretty standard today. Um, so you're just able to do a lot, more with a lot less back then. And nowadays you really have to stretch your ad dollars. And as you know, cause you're in PPC, you know, internal uh, advertising, you just have to make sure you're constantly optimizing um, your ads so you get the highest ROAS. And that's really what we're trying to do with off Amazon traffic is find a way to make it cost effective for sellers and um, easy. You know what I mean? Um, back then, you know, like, like I, I mentioned, you know, stitching together all of these different strategies is extremely complex. And usually you didn't even start to create an external launch strategy until you were seven figures plus because of the, you know, the investment and the complexity of it. And we're trying to make that simple for users so they can set up campaigns, have a product launch within, you know, five to 10 minutes and be driving that external traffic, you know, almost immediately. Right. So when you say external traffic, most people are going to assume like TikTok ads, Google, uh, Google ads, Facebook ads. And that's kind of what I assume too. We were just chatting before we hit record. And I thought you guys were like a tool for channeling Google ad traffic to Amazon. 
and yeah. it turns out you're doing something that's number one a lot more novel and number two uh from what it sounds like a lot more like effective than just like driving expensive off amazon traffic that doesn't always convert that well so can you kind of explain yeah. to us like what you guys do how it works where the traffic comes from and how like the individual seller could use it yeah 100 percent. so that is in our pipeline to um enable users to create uh, google ads facebook ads uh, maybe even TikTok ads TikTok shop is now a thing so that we're you know thinking about how we can incorporate that so that is in our pipeline but right now um Going back to being able to control your, your ROAS and your ad costs, we've actually created a customer network. So we have 50,000 plus customers. We're constantly growing that. And we leverage that to drive that traffic. Because if, we, if you own the traffic, right, you can get it to the listings for a lot less. Um, and so that's really our primary focus is building a corresponding, uh, basically a deal network of shoppers and then using that to funnel to the listings. And again, we can create a much higher ROAS, um, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, a little bit later. Um, but it's just way more beneficial for the seller. Right. So how does it work from like the point of view of the seller? Like, do I just connect your software and create campaigns? Yeah. How do I decide on like the ACOS? Like, how does the actually work? Yeah, so it's super simple. Um, we work primarily with Amazon sellers, uh, but we do have a lot of omni channel as well. Um, so Let's assume you're on Amazon, you would come onto the software, um, choose a plan. The plans are based on credits. Uh, one credit equals one sale. And then off Amazon, we do what's called review requests. We don't do it on Amazon just because they're very strict about reviews. Um, and those equal one credit as well. So if you're on the expander plan, you get 100 credits and you can use that towards sales or review requests off Amazon. Um, you import a product, we have an auto import. We don't connect to SP API or any other APIs for marketplaces. We want to be a standalone solution. Um, so our technology will scrape the, the page and pull in your product details in you know under 10 seconds. And then you once the product's imported, you can create a launch. We have what's called the, the organic launch type and the promotional launch type. They're two different launch types um, that the user can choose based on their launch strategy, and they can set that up in five minutes. They choose um, a distribution schedule, how many uh, promotions they want each day. Um, you can do a completely custom, do five one day, 10 the next, 15, 10, 20, whatever. And then we have an evergreen feature as well that they can turn on that will continue driving traffic and we don't charge credits on that. And so that's an a, a additional benefit of uh, our mid to high level plans. Um, so yeah, all in all, you know, you sign up and within 10 minutes, you can have a launch created, submitted to our team. We'll review it pretty quickly push it to our audience and you can be getting sales in under under 60 minutes. Right. That's interesting. So you buy a certain number of credits each month based yep. on like how many sales or purchases you need. Mm -hmm. And then you set the ACOS that you're willing to like actually spend for each sale. And I assume like the higher the ACOS you're willing to pay, the faster those items will move. 100%. And then those go out to the customers that you guys have like kind of aggregated in this list or the site. And then they buy and every single month your credits like renew and Correct. you get more sales pretty much right so you what role it. does this play then in product launches like am i doing this before running ads to kind of get some traction maybe get some reviews on my listings am i running these side by side you know how do i allocate my budget between these like just yeah, like great. some random questions most sellers would probably be thinking of right now 100 percent. yeah great question we're trying to get away from this launch terminology because sellers think that they're you know, it's only beneficial with new products, which is not the case. We did um, a comprehensive case study. We've done over 5,000 launches since uh, launching the software in, in December of 21. Um, so we've had a lot of experience doing product launches. Um, we took a thousand, just of the most recent. We didn't cherry pick or anything. Um, and we dove into that data to see which launches uh, are doing best. And there is significant evidence that honeymoon. So within the first five to six weeks of the launch, it has much more uh, ranking implications. Um, those products were on average 140% increase in BSR, which is equates to roughly three to five X ROAS. Um, whereas m existing products and even mature products have a little bit, it's just a diminishing return. Um, but even our mature products that were over a year had a 90% increase in BSR on average. So, uh, so to answer your question, new products, it's, it's extremely beneficial because there is a honeymoon period. The way I explain honeymoon 
to sellers is, you know, Amazon's trying to, and all these channels are trying to aggregate as much data as possible um, because they don't know how well your product's going to convert using specific keywords or just how desirable the product is. Um, and so they want to get as much data as possible. So they're going to hyper rank you to get that data um, and then choose where to rank you in the preceding weeks and months. You know what I mean? And so that's why that period is so beneficial. Um, so I say absolutely, you know, being a former seller, launching products using our software um, is kind of a no brainer. You will get a very high ROAS up to 45 X um, ROAS in some cases. Um, and I'll go over the top categories that have the most luck on our software. Um, and then for existing products, you can use it as well, right? So let's say you ran out of inventory, you want to um, get your product search optimization back up, or maybe it's a seasonal product, um, or you just, you know, a product needs a little bit of love and, you know, more sales to index a little bit higher. Uh, there's a lot of use cases for it. That makes sense. Does it work better for certain marketplaces? I know you mentioned to me that like with other marketplaces, you could do review requests and kind of get things moving that way. Does this like work better, especially since maybe other marketplaces aren't as competitive, so it's easier to rank perhaps, or like how does that work? For sure. Yeah, and that's a great question. So all of these marketplaces are very similar in the way that they're ranking products and it's based on sales velocity, you know what I mean? So. Um, so if you have more sales velocity, they're going to rank you higher for specific keywords. And so it works for all marketplaces. It works, I would say best on Amazon because we've catered a lot of the strategy to Amazon, but it works well on all of their channels as well, because you're boosting up sales, helping with marketplace search optimization. Um, there's a little bit of nuances with different channels. Like for example, uh, Walmart prioritizes products that are at their local super centers. And so no matter how much you try to rank, um, I don't know, you know, vitamin C serum or something, if it's not at that local super center, it's going to rank those products ahead of, of your results because they have super centers. Amazon doesn't, right? They just have FBA. So there's little nuances that we're learning for each marketplace, but it is very effective across all different channels. We've done, um, we've done Etsy, eBay, Amazon, Target, uh, Walmart. We've done Chewy.com. We've done Wayfair. We've done iHerb.com. Um, and so it, it works on all these marketplaces. The benefit too of off Amazon, if you're on a different marketplace is we can do review requests as well. Um, so now you're improving uh, both sales and conversion rates, assuming those reviews come in are good, right? Um, and really sales and conversion rates are what creates this explosive growth, so. So what are like some best practices then for driving this type of off Amazon traffic or other channels too, if you guys have tested that out yet? Best practices. Yeah. I mean, going back to the comprehensive case study, um, we find that the best launches are about 13.5 days. So I just say two weeks. Um, the average units were, I'm looking at it right now. Um, our top 10% had a 15 X ROAS and a 753% increase in BSR. Um, so if you follow our rules and basically we'll tell you like have at least 10 reviews, um, have a plus content, have a really good listing, and you can be in the top 10% and see a significant ROAS. If you don't have those components, let's say you don't have brand registry, so you don't have a plus content, um, or maybe your title's not optimized or you, 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 your, your bullets aren't very long, so they're not indexing a lot of keywords, right? There's all these little things that will just reduce the performance of the launch. Um, and this right. is just kind of common knowledge for a lot of sellers. So you just want to optimize your listing as much as possible and get as much social proof early on so that your launch is more effective. Um, that said, launching even with a, like maybe one, two, three reviews is still beneficial because a lot of sellers will um, use Vine to get reviews. And by launching your product, getting more sales, it's going to expedite that process of getting Vine reviews. So even though we don't do reviews, they're going to come in faster uh, as a result of using the service. Right. What do you mean by two weeks? Does that mean like using all of your credits in two weeks or how does that work? Yeah. Um, so two week launches. So you set up a campaign and uh, we usually recommend what's called a staircase launch where you, let's say you start with five promotions, then 10, 15, 20, um, however you want to work up just so the increase in sales velocity is more natural. Um, that campaign, two weeks is really the optimal time frame um, based on the top 10% of those 
thousand launches, um, that's how long you want to run it. And um, what else? What other findings? So top categories, I can go over that really quick. Books sure. are the very top. Um, arts, craft, sewing, autom- automotive, grocery, gourmet, office products, toys and games, um, home improvement, beauty and personal care, sports and outdoors, pet supplies, clothing, shoes, jewelry, electronics. Those are all the top um, categories. And it's basically, you know, if you think about, is this product like highly desirable and novel, you know what I mean? And, um, and if it is, then it's just going to do way better because our buyer network is going to really gravitate towards that product and want to, want to purchase it and want to talk about it. Right. So tell me a bit more about this staircase launch. So you guys like release a certain number of credits Mm -hmm. every day. So first day is like five, then 10, then 15 to make it look like you're getting momentum or how does like that affect the launch? Yeah, exactly. So what you'll do is in the system, you'll set up um, a certain launch type and you can choose the number of promotions per day that will release those to our customer network. And so um, ideally you're going to get a, what we call a hundred percent sell through where you schedule five and you sell five and you schedule 10 and you sell 10. Sometimes that doesn't happen depending on how aggressive the launch is or how desirable the product is. Um, but basically our software will disperse those promotions and allow buyers to purchase them. And we have what's called a day parting feature. So it's spread out evenly throughout the day. So if you have five a day, for example, you're going to get one sale every couple of hours, 10 a day, one sale every roughly two hours. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's how it works. And then every time you get a sale, um, it charges a credit and then it will also charge uh, the product cost times whatever a cost you choose. Um, and so that's the other benefit of having a software is it's very like, cash flow neutral, uh, which is very important for sellers is to not have to spend a significant sum up front. So you can come on and with just paying for the first day's promotions, you can get that launch started. And then our technology will auto charge your wallet every evening for the next day's promotion. So you're never, you know, paying more than a day, for example. Um, otherwise, you can send wires to us and we give 2% cash back on wires. If, if, if sellers do decide to do that. Right. And like, what effect does that have on organic? So it's just like the takeoff velocity, because kind of what's in my head right now is you guys kind of slowly scale up, then obviously they max out on their credits. So it kind of pipeline of sales coming in stops yeah. until they renew for next month or they buy more credits. However, it works with like you, uh, the way you guys have your pricing set up and you guys are like assuming that at that point, the PPC or organic will make up for that um, missing velocity or like how, how does that like pan out for sellers? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, if a seller runs out of credits, we have what's called a credit overage, which is usually a dollar more than what we would charge. <clears throat> so for example, the expander plan is three ninety five a month for a hundred credits, which is a $3.95 per credit. If you exhaust all of those, it will charge four ninety five for an overage credit, we're not going to cut off your campaign because that's going to be really detrimental. Um, so the seller would just pay the overage credits in the event that they ran out or they can get on a higher plan. Um, and then the best practice really is exactly what you said. You want to build up the sales velocity with the launch and then kind of do like a reverse staircase on the back end, and then turn on our evergreen feature, which will continue driving up to 10 sales per day. Um, which is where we max out because we don't want the evergreen to be another launch. We just want it to supplement sales after the launch ends. So we don't have that inevitable drop in sales velocity. Um, But at that point, you would ideally flip on PPC. Um, Let's say you have more reviews coming in, you're indexing for keywords more. So your PPC should drop down and you can offset the cost of the product launch with higher PPC efforts. And then if you want to take it a step further, you can create what's called a promotional launch, which um, allows the user to create single or group claim codes and disperse those to our network. And that's really more of a sustainable launch is just releasing a couple um, single use claim codes to our audience every day to keep that traffic coming in really indefinitely just to maintain that ranking. Right. So what's the difference between Evergreen and the regular launch then? Because it at least for me it sounds kind of similar with the units coming in from the uh shopper network you guys have set up yeah great question so the regular launch is you know going to consume credits that's really 
your main focus is, you know, let's say you do two weeks, you build up sales velocity. Um, and then the evergreen is something we spent a lot of time building because it was, um, it was just a high requirement from a lot of our sellers and me being a seller. I knew that if you stop a launch abruptly, rank drop is inevitable because you're cutting off that additional sales velocity. And so we want to find a way to continue driving traffic without charging the seller for credits. And that's what the evergreen feature does. So sellers that maximize that feature can reduce the cost per credit by 50% every month by, by leveraging that feature. And that's on our expander master and our enterprise plans. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And so by the like way, one, sure. yeah, really quick. Um, you can use up to 50% of your initial promotions up to 10 per day. Those are the limitations with Evergreen. So let's assume you have a hundred unit launch. Uh, you can do additional 50 units on the back end as Evergreen up to 10 per day. Uh, yeah. Great. That's interesting. So like, yeah. what is it the right and wrong time to use this type of traffic? Like what type of seller should or should not be using this and what yeah. type of launch will or won't benefit from this? Yeah, great question. Um, the best time is going to be new products. Um, there's really not a wrong time. There are products that historically haven't done as well. Um, so I'm looking over here, like shoes and handmade products um, don't have that much success. Um, when not to use it. There's really, again, there's, and I'm not just saying this, there's really not a time where you shouldn't be using it but there are times where you're gonna get more of a benefit. And that's the top categories that I mentioned, uh, newer products, uh, products that have optimized listings, it's gonna be most beneficial for those. Um, if you're lacking those, if you don't have social proof, if you don't have A plus content, your, your listing's not optimized, you can launch, but you're not gonna see a significant ROAS, right? It might be break even, or you might even lose money if you don't have um, all your ducks in a row. Right. Are there any big mistakes to avoid besides like what we already mentioned out those things and bullet points and like keywords to index for? Yeah, um, I actually created a top 30 mistakes doc. If any of the listeners want that, reach out to me at sethofbrandexpand.io. Um, and I have this doc where I created 30 mistakes that sellers made. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ones. Um, the biggest one we see is not enough inventory, right? The last thing you want to do is get your product ranked towards the top of Amazon for your, you know, primary, secondary, tertiary keywords, and then run out of inventory. And most sellers know that it's extremely detrimental because you lose the sales velocity and you're basically telling Amazon, Hey, I can't keep this in stock. And they're not going to prior, even after you come back, let's say you push two months worth of inventory, it's not going to rank the same. So I can't like emphasize that enough to, to make sure you have enough inventory. And what I tell sellers is, you know, look at the top. Three. If you're looking to get to the top of the search results, look at your top three competitors. There's a Helium 10 plugin that shows estimated sales velocity. And then just divide that by three, right? And so, like, if all your competitors are doing, let's say, 20,000, 10,000, 5,000, that's 35,000 divided by three is what? Like 11.5. So get 11,000 units stocked if, you, if you're really serious. Um, one of the most successful launches we've ever done um, this is a while ago, so I'll just say the product was uh, fidget, these fidget poppers, you know, there's weird things that people carry around. Um, this guy, this individual stocked 50,000 units uh, before the holidays. This is like Christmas of 21. And he had to stock another 100,000. So in total, we pushed, not through our software alone, mostly organic, but we were able to push roughly 150,000 units in, during the holiday season. It was, it was insane. And I looked even, uh, two years later, I looked, um, a year and a half, two years later, I looked at the listing and it was still number one in that category. So launching effectively in the beginning is probably the single most important thing a seller can do. Um, so you have to nail it. And if you nail it, it's going to pay dividends for years. All right. That's interesting. Super yeah. interesting. So kind of as a uh, closing question here, you've probably yeah. seen more of the other marketplaces or channels that most of us have just because you've launched on so many of them. 
you guys have probably done thousands of launches by now. So like, what are the other channels? Like, um, where's the opportunity at? Obviously it depends on different like categories and different type of products and different like average selling prices, but in order of, you know, for the average seller, like the most opportunistic or like biggest marketplace, um, or a marketplace where you're going to see like good ROAS or margin to least important, like where would you rank these in terms of us that are just looking to expand off Amazon right now? Yeah, man. That, uh... I have a lot of thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for Walmart. I always have been. Uh, I get a lot of pushback because they just can't seem to deliver. Amazon just has superior technology with their fulfillment capabilities. And so Walmart's just always trying to catch up. I actually talked to a seller recently that worked for Walmart back in the early 2000s. And it was like taboo to talk about e-commerce. Like they literally didn't want to acknowledge it. And then, of course, the inevitable, you know, and they're like, shit, now we got to play catch up. So they're constantly just playing catch up. The benefit of Walmart is really big products have a fraction of the reviews. So if you type in like yoga mat, for example, you're going to see 50 to hundred thousand reviews for products on Amazon. You can't compete with that. Like unless you have a million dollars to throw at the product on Walmart, you might see 50 to hundred reviews. And so it's kind of like Amazon was in 2012 where there's just nobody really uh, on there. And so I tell sellers like, listen, nobody really knows if Walmart's going to be able to catch up. What we do know is by 2040, 95% of people are going to be shopping online. And so if they don't pivot, they're going to become obsolete, right? People aren't just, they're not going to go into super centers when they can get a product in less than 30 minutes to their doorstep. It just won't make sense. And so you're either betting that Walmart will get its shit together <laughs> and catch up or slowly become obsolete. And I, I choose the former, right? And so what you wanna do is get your products on there, get that social proof, and then who knows? Like they might they might start to shift where they're making more e-commerce sales. That's certainly what we're seeing is the compound annual growth rate of Walmart is much higher than Amazon with regards to e-commerce. And so if that trend continues, you're gonna position yourself to really capitalize in the coming years. So I'm really bullish on Walmart. Um, Target is a diff it's hard to get into the target marketplace. I haven't heard a lot of great feedback for target to be completely honest. Um, but I would say if you're a huge brand, it's certainly worth a try to get in there and go through the application process. Um, Etsy is super challenging because there's so many sellers. Like we think like 1.5 million third party sellers on Amazon, there's like 9 million on Etsy. It's just insane. Um, but the margins are much higher. So if you can, capture and the conversion rates are, are extremely low. Like I thought something was wrong with our products to get like 0.5 to 1% conversion, but that's actually pretty oh, wow. good on Etsy. Yeah, it's wild. So you have to get way more people, way more traffic. It's actually much harder to get sales on Etsy because it's just, there's so many products. Um, but if you have something unique, novel, um, something craft, you know, crafty that, that you've created, if you can scale that process and do like print on demand or drop shipping with something creative, Etsy is definitely a place you want to be. Um, the growth of Etsy has been insane since the pandemic. Um, so that's definitely a promising marketplace. It's heavily female. So female entrepreneurs uh, typically sell on Etsy. So it just depends. Um, products. Target has a lot of repeat customers. Like they're the highest repeat customers. And so if you sell something like home goods or something that's really appealing to that target demographic, um, target might be good, right? So I, I'm super bullish on Omnichannel because, you know, we, we see this FTC lawsuit against Amazon, you know, 19 states coming you know, after Amazon. Amazon's a juggernaut. And I do believe that they're engaging in monopolistic and anti-competitive behavior. And they're either going to have to stop that or, they're, you know, something is going to happen. And so if history repeats itself, other marketplaces will start to take that market share. It's just inevitable. And so position yourself on the marketplace that makes sense and then try to capitalize on what I believe is an ine inevitable shift to Omni. All right. Uh, this is kind of a spicy question, but who do you have your money on and like the market face stores? I have my own opinion on this and I think most like other market faces are going down, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts first. Man, um, Amazon's going to be the leader. It, 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 there's no way, at least what I'm seeing now, there's just, it's, it's, very, it's gonna be very, very difficult for anyone to catch Amazon. There will be a shift where they're gonna lose market share 
for the reasons I stated and then other reasons, but they're always going to be a leader. Um, in terms of second, man, uh, Walmart has what, like 62,000 super centers. And so if they're smart and they figure out which super centers would be more suitable for fulfillment centers, close them down, or at least make half of them a, a fulfillment center, automate that process. So they don't have some, you know, some guy go walk back and try to find a product and put it in a box, right. Figure out how to automate that much better. They could definitely, um, that's the, the biggest advantage is how many super centers they have. And if you're talking about getting something to your customer in less than 30 minutes, Walmart is positioned to do that because everybody is within a few miles of a Walmart. Not everybody's within a few miles of an FBA center. There's only 150 around the country. So even if drone delivery becomes um, a thing, which I, I think it will, Walmart will still be positioned to get you products much quicker. And so if they can figure that out, uh, my money's on, on them. Right. No, I, uh, my default answer is Amazon. Yeah. Uh, Cause I don't think the others are not, not all of them, but most others aren't sufficiently differentiated enough. And yeah. even if they are like Etsy is kind of differentiated, like just the type of products sold on there aren't going to have the same market potential as what's sold on Amazon. Cause Amazon's like the everything store. Etsy has a bunch of stuff on there, but it's mostly just like arts and crafts and like, you know, yeah. candle gifts and custom canvases and a bunch of other stuff like that. Yeah, um, I agree. I always, I always yeah. tell sellers, like, I think these marketplaces are really going to just differentiate themselves and you're going to go to different marketplaces for different reasons. Like I don't buy gifts on Amazon. I don't know if you look like a gift for wife, like it's just absolute trash. You know, <laughs> like you would never buy these gifts on Amazon that rank high. Uh, but on Etsy, it's obviously, it's just more creative and it's more thoughtful. So I, I, I generally buy gifts on Etsy. Um, when I'm shopping for my home, I go to Wayfair, you know, or Target. And so if I, if I need toiletries and just read items that are repeat, like subscribe and say, like I do that on Amazon. So I think it's going to, I think that's, what's going to happen more is all of these marketplaces will, you know, specialize in one specific niche. Amazon is going to be the top dog, but these other marketplaces will carve out their niche and, and people will go there for those reasons. Yeah. Oh, I think that's what's already happening, but I also think that, you know, if Amazon does want to, and if they do have the focus, they could possibly beat out those other marketplaces oh, at their sure. own thing. It's a um, thing yeah. yeah. If Amazon doesn't win, my money would actually be on TikTok because I feel yeah. like they're the only ones like sufficiently differentiated enough. Because yeah. what I tried to look at when assessing ideas, like is what's possible this year that wasn't possible like last year or a couple of years ago. And yeah. what people emulating Amazon um, are trying to do has been possible for like two, three decades. I think that's how long Amazon has been open, probably three decades or even four decades. So, you know, they're just trying to copy them and you can't beat someone by copying them. But if you look at something like China, China has like a huge, huge like social commerce market. Like people are buying from those live video chats. I've always found it weird. I just saw like this news article about an influencer. It just like picks up products like this, puts it down and people are just buying like six figures worth of the products that they pick up. So I think so, it's huge there. I think it can be huge like in the US and like in the Western world too, because I don't think people operate differently. Like obviously there are cultural nuances, but I think if people are buying from people there, I also think it, it might happen here. And the aspect of like, why, why is this only possible now? Uh, is because in the US, we didn't really have like, um, what's it called? Like an aggregation of, uh, how, how do I, an aggregation of like people on one platform like sharing video content and just like people with their own like live audiences that just go live and they get donations and stuff. I don't think we've had that. Obviously we had different social networks like, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, but I think TikTok is special in its own way. And I think it's probably closer to the playbook they're running in China. And I think China's like social commerce market is like huge. Yeah. So I think this is probably where I'd put my money on if it's not Amazon, but for now I'm like defaulting with, uh, with Amazon. Yeah, I agree with all that. It's crazy. You know, we look back when, you know, joined Facebook in 2005, which I feel super old saying that, but like, you know, we, our generation, our parents' generation, like we go on social media sites to socialize. Like, we don't do shop. That's why Facebook ads were always trash when you're driving Facebook to Amazon because people aren't, the, aren't in the mood to shop. But it seems like the younger generation wants to shop while having 
that social ex experience. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's interesting. It's super interesting. But I saw an email come through and, and somebody was saying like, I forget, it was like 60,000 a day they were making on this TikTok shop item. It was just like some hairbrush or something weird. Um, yeah, I agree, man. There's so much potential with that. Um, and then what's the other one? Timu. Timu is disrupting the space big time. Like oh, if I was Timu. Amazon, I'd be, well, I'd be pretty worried about that because they're basically what's taking Timu. Timu. Yeah, Timu yeah. is the Chinese company that they had the Super Bowl commercial. They're like shop like a billionaire. Fucking terrible ad, but, <laughs> um, but. It's uh, it's basically Amazon products because it's all Chinese manufacturers, but it's dirt cheap. So they're going direct from manufacturer to consumer versus Amazon or third-party seller, which is the middleman. And so they're able to sell these products like you know a smartwatch for like ten dollars. Um, the only drawback is a quality is inferior, and then B is just the shipping is like two weeks because it's coming overseas. Um, but anybody who doesn't need something now and wants something for like 80% less than what it is on Amazon would go to Timu. So again, if I was Amazon, I'd be pretty worried. The, uh, if they figure out a way to expedite that shipping, like let's say, I don't know if this is possible, but I was just thinking about this the other day. If they had like a massive barge like in the ocean with like a fulfillment or something, if they figured out a way to get the products here faster, it would completely disrupt Amazon. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And I think the quality part is uh, solvable. Like it's not like the stuff sold on Amazon US is actually from the US. It's all from like Beijing or Shenzhen or something. So it's not like but they can't solve it. assembled in the them. US. <laughs> that's what everybody but, says, assembled in the US. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's also a big one. It's probably either going to be them or TikTok. If it happens at all, I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe like 20 years from now, something changes and it does happen. But for the near term, like the next 10 years, I think Amazon's probably safe. Amazon's king, man. They, they got first mover's advantage and they have the technology. Like They got it down, man. Bezos yeah. hopefully has a, a massive head start for sure. For sure, for sure. Well then, um, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I had a lot yeah. of fun speaking of like Amazon, sorry, off Amazon traffic, and the for type sure. of like shopper network that you've set up. I think it's been very useful. And uh, yeah, where can our listeners find out more about you? Yeah, go to um, brandexpand.io. Um, you can request a demo there. Um, we'll send a couple different options. You can do an interactive demo. You could schedule a call with our team, whatever. Um, check out our homepage. We've got a new homepage going live here in about a week or two. So super excited about that. Um, or reach out to our team, success at brandexpand.io. Or just reach out to me, Seth, at brandexpand.io. Perfect. And we'll, uh, we'll help you crush, crush sales on your marketplace. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you again next Thank week. Thank you, Saeed. Appreciate it, man.